Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This is a final video on complex numbers and how to work with them in mathematics for at least the undergraduate student. This one's more about pattern recognition, which becomes very important as you move into calculus. So let's focus on simplifying powers of the imaginary unit i. One thing you need to note here i, we know, is equal to the square root of negative 1. We also know that i squared is going to be negative 1, because if you square both sides of that first equation, you get i squared is equal to negative 1. i cubed would be negative 1, well, maybe I should say it this way, i cubed will be i squared times i, obviously, and i squared is a negative 1. So i cubed is a negative i. And i to the fourth is i squared times i squared, which is negative one times negative one. So i to the fourth will be a positive one. How will that help us? Because if you then continue forward and you say, well, what's i to the fifth? You see it's i to the fourth times i, but i to the fourth is one. So this is going to be 1 times i, which is exactly the same as i to the first. And an i to the sixth, well, that's i squared times i to the fourth. But i to the fourth is 1, and i squared is a negative 1, so this will be a negative 1. And then i to the seventh, well, we know that's i to the fourth times i to the third. We know i to the fourth is 1, and i to the third is negative i. So this is going to be 1 times a negative i, which is exactly the same thing as i to the third. And then finally, i to the eighth. Well, that's i to the fourth times i raised to the fourth power, which is 1 times 1, or 1, which is the same thing as i to the fourth. What I'm stating here, kind of in a very long-winded fashion, is that there is a pattern to the powers of i. They repeat every four. So when I get to a power of four on i, I know that value will be one. So now, if you think about i to the 327th power, you can use laws of exponents to say, well, that's the same thing as i to the 100th plus 100th plus 100th plus 27. Normally you wouldn't do this, but I'm just showcasing something here. And this will be i to the 100th times i to the 100th times i to the 100th and then times i to the 27th. But 100 is divisible by 4. So every time that we have a power that's divisible by 4, i to that power will be 1. So i to the 100th will be 1 times i to the 100th, which will be 1 times i to the 100th, which will be 1, and then times i to the 27th. Now we just have to ask, how many times does 4 go into 27? Really, you don't even know, need to know how many times it goes in. What you need to know is, what is the remainder after I divide 27 by 4? That would be i to the 3rd. Because remember, it's going to be i to the 24th, times i to the third, but i to the 24th, well, 24 is divisible by four, so i to the 24th should be one. And i to the third, according to our first four results here, is gonna be negative i. And the trick here is to note that you can tell what is the remainder of a an integer divided by four by looking at the last two digits of the integer that was handed to you. Let me say that again. If you were handed something like i raised to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th power, 
whatever the number that is, right? So that's 1,234,567. And I wanna know, what is that? The fact that any number that is a multiple of 100 is divisible by four, let me say that again, any number that is divisible by 100 is divisible by four because 100 is divisible by four. So if 100 is divisible by four, then so is twice it. So is 10 times it. So is 100 times it, right? And so you can see that if I took one, two, three, four, five, 12,345 times 100, that number should be divisible by four because again, 100 is divisible by four. So all you really need to focus on when asked for what is I to the huge power, all you need to focus on are the last two digits. And you ask yourself, what is the remainder when 67 is divided by four? Well, the remainder, let's see, I know four goes into 60 evenly. It goes into 60 15 times. So really I'm asking how, how many times does four go into seven? And it goes in, not even how many times, but what's the remainder? It goes in once with a remainder of three. And so this will be a negative I because that's what I cubed is. That's kind of the trick to dealing with powers of I. Not that you're gonna honestly deal with large powers of I that often, but at least knowing how to detect a pattern is critically important because as you move forward in mathematics, specifically towards calculus, you need to be able to spend time investigating patterns. All right, that does it for this series of videos. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't cold Sure, you may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry